Welcome to South Florida Saltwater Fishing. I'm Heath, and it's time to get into the bite. Dolphin in the boat. Oh my God. Woo! Dolphin in the solo kingfish trip right there. That's mutton snapper right there, baby. We're going to go over what I consider to be the easiest way to catch one of the most prized, elusive, and voracious predators of the deep edge of the reef. That's right, we're going over the easiest way to catch Wahoo. Before we get into this though, if you want to learn more about fishing, grow as an angler, or just see some great exciting offshore fishing adventures, you can start by hitting the subscribe button. Don't forget to turn on the notification bell so that you won't miss a thing. All right, folks, like I said, we're going over the easiest way to catch Wahoo. Without a doubt, the easiest way to catch Wahoo is by planer trolling. Now, I know there is always this debate that no, high-speed trolling is way more effective than planer trolling. The reason it's considered more effective is because it illuminates bycatch. High-speed trolling is done with lures like Yozuri Bonitas, deep diving plugs from Nomad or any other manufacturer like Rapala Magnum x wraps or custom-made Islanders with, you know, trolling skirts and double hooks and shrink wrap and cable. And you'll typically pull it with a trolling cigar lead like this. But for all intensive purposes, I promise you the easiest way to track down and target Wahoo, whether you're inexperienced or a seasoned old salt is most definitely planer trolling. Okay, so to simplify this process of planer trolling, to make it so that you can head out and get into the bite with the Wahoo, we're gonna go over how, when, and where. The three categories that will make it the easiest for you to say, hey, I'm going for Wahoo, and more than likely, find them and get into that bite. Okay, so to start off with, we've already said the how. We're going to get into that a little bit more in depth here in a moment. We're going to show you exactly how to do it. Now to answer the when question. I know Wahoo migrate a couple of times a year thickest past the southeast Florida coast. I've heard for many years that the late fall months are the time to go for them. October, November. This is not correct. The best time of year to track down Wahoo and target them specifically off the southeast coast of Florida is the month of March. The prevailing northeast winds are shifting to the east. The end of winter storms are starting to subside. And when the big female wahoo are migrating through at this time, gorging themselves, they seem to bite more voraciously. It's almost as if they let down their guard and they eat with reckless abandon. We're talking about March off southeast coast of Florida. It can be a gnarly month for the weather. So when you get the breaks in between the storm fronts, that's when you've got to head out, take the chance and go for them. The weather is going to be nasty. It's going to be overcast. It's going to be cloudy. The seas are going to be choppy, a little bit bumpy. This is when the Wahoo are going to be biting. They're going to be feeding. So now that we've gone over the when to find them, we're going to cover the where to find them. Wahoo, believe it or not, are reef predators. The key depth to look for them is off of the deep ledge of the third reef, between two and 300 feet. You don't want to go in any shallower than that because then you'll be looking at bycatch like barracuda, bonita, kingfish. And if you don't find them on your first couple of rounds in and out of the reef's edge, you gotta stick with it. You will get them. So the way to find this deep ledge of the reef is you're gonna to wanna to look at your GPS. On your GPS, you've got contour lines. You've gotta to learn to read contour lines and understand what they're telling you on your GPS. Contour lines define what the bottom looks like without looking at your fish finder. The way this works is you have these contour lines. The further apart they're spread, the less of an incline your bottom is. More closely packed together the contour lines are, the steeper of the incline the bottom of the seabed is. So you can actually physically see on your GPS 
where there will be a ledge that is starting to scope off and head towards deeper water without trying to find a ledge on your fish finder. You have to trust what you see from your GPS and then you're going to get up to trolling speed and you're going to do S-shaped curves straight out and straight back in, straight out and straight back in until you find what depth the wahoo are at. Chances of getting more than one wahoo in a day are very slim. If it happens, wow, it is a spectacular day. So now we've gone over the when and the where. Now we're gonna to start to go over the how, which is planar trolling. I told you the sky is gonna be overcast, nasty, and difficult to deal with. When it comes to lure selection, you're gonna to wanna to troll a strip bait lure. You're gonna contrast your sky color. Typically, I would say match the water color, match the sky. Not in this case. I've found over the years that Wahoo like to hit brighter colored strip bait lures tipped with Bonita strips in nastier overcast skies. What this lure is, is it is a four inch trolling squid, pink, white, and yellow, and it's topped with a pink iridescent sea witch. And we're gonna tip it with the Bonita strip and we're gonna pull it behind the boat. Okay, so when it comes to planer trolling, this is my setup. What this is, is this is a Penn International 30. It's spooled with 80 pound brake. It is on a seven foot custom chaos rod. This rod has all roller guides. That way when the fish peels out line, it rolls off and it stops and prevents friction and heating up of the line which can compromise the integrity of it. So, a piece of advice when it comes to planer trolling is you're gonna wanna use braid. If you don't have braid and you have monofilament packed on your reel, it is perfectly fine. The issue with monofilament is that when it trolls a planer, it stretches and it retracts and also it lets your planer bob and weave up and down with this stretching and this retracting of the line. Remember, monofilament acts like a giant rubber band. It is made to stretch. It is made to absorb shock and help set hooks. That's what monofilament is for. Braid does not give. Your planer will troll at a steady depth when using braid. It will not be compromised. Monofilament, the stretching and the retracting, you are compromising the elasticity factor of your line every time you set your planer. With braid, that does not happen. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna show you how to get rigged up for planer trolling. And then we're gonna head out on the boat. And we're gonna get into it. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to use a barrel swivel. This is a 300 pound barrel swivel. You're gonna want heavy gear for when you are planer trolling because it's gonna have a lot of resistance put on it by a diving planer. You're gonna to wanna to use a swivel like this with a clasp called a coast lock. You don't wanna use a snap swivel that snaps inside a sheath on it because it can get yanked out and straighten your swivel out when it gets hit. All right, so the first thing you do is you're gonna take your main line. You're going to hook it to the ring that is on your planer arm. Then you will close the coast lock snap. This is what your line will look like when you're pulling it through the water. Your planer sets like this, the weight dives down, and it makes your line go down. This is a number six planer. It will dive down to about 35 to 50 feet when pulled six to eight knots. All right, the next thing to do is we're gonna attach a leader. My leader is 100 feet of 60 pound monofilament. When you are creating your leader, you need at least 75 feet of it. I use 100 feet. You've got to get your bait away from this big hunk of metal, the planer. This is a fish detractant. If your fish see it, especially wahoo that spook real easily, they're not going to bite your bait. Now on my leader, I have two swivels. One of my swivels, which will hook right to my planer, is another 300 pound swivel. And then on the other end, which is the bait side of my leader, I have a size seven snap swivel. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take the planer side of our leader, which has the 300 pound swivel on it, and we're gonna hook it to the eye that is in the plate of our planer. We're gonna feed it through there, and we're gonna close the coast lock clasp. So the way this works is you're trolling, you're trolling, a fish hits it and it will straighten out, 
and this will make your planer rise to the top. The next thing we do, now that we have our planer hooked on, is we're going to unravel a little bit of our bait end of our leader, and we're simply going to hook it onto our lure. Hook it onto the number seven swivel, and we are good to go. We're all rigged up, we're ready to head offshore, tip this with a bonita strip, dunk it in the water, and get trolled. All right, the next step we're gonna do is I'm gonna take you out on a boat, and I'm gonna show you how to tip a strip bait lure with a bonita strip. What I want to do is I want to show you how to hook a bonita strip onto just two 5.0 J hooks. You don't need wires or any sorts of stuff like that unless you're using a single hook. I like to use double hook, kind of expedites the process. What you want to do is you always want to send your hooks through the meat side of the bonita strip, not through the skin. All right, so what we'll do is we're going to measure out our hooks. Our second hook is going to go through just the tip of the front of the strip. So we measure it out and we find out where our, about where our second hook is going to fall. Right there. So I take my second hook and I drive it through and I plunge it through the skin. And then I will round out my first hook, my lead hook, and I will also send that through the skin. And that is how you hook a Bonita strip up to your tandem 5.0 J-hook set. So that was how you tip a strip bait lure with a Bonita strip. Very simple. Once you do it a couple of times, it'll be second nature. You'll have no problem. Just remember, always send your hooks through the meat side, not through the skin side first. Now what we're going to do is we're going to head out on our boat. We're going to find our depth. Like I said, two to three hundred feet. We're going to put our boat in slope forward. We're going to toss our lure in and we're going to unravel our leader from our yo-yo. Once our leader is all unraveled, we will drop our planer in and we will put our reel into free spool. Now you have to remember, you already have 100 feet of line out because that's your leader. You don't need to let out two or 300 feet of main line because all of a sudden you'll be way far out. But you do need to let enough main line out to get it so that your planer can dive to its optimal diving depth. So you're gonna wanna let out between 100 and 150 feet. That way your total length is about 250 feet out. This will make it so that your planer can dive down to that 35 to 50 feet depth if you're using a number six planer. Now I wanna explain a little bit about using braid when it comes to planer trolling. Braid is sensitive. Any resistance put on your planer by your lure will trip the planer automatically because of the sensitivity of brake. So what you need to do is once you've let out your desired amount of line, you need to slow your boat down. You need to keep your rod in free spool. You need to keep letting out line till it almost goes slack. And then you will lock your reel up and then you will put the boat in slow forward. When the boat goes in slow forward, you will see your rod bend over and have this great almost 90 degree parabolic bend. That is the shock absorbency of your rod and that is what is assisting your planer to grab and dive down into the water. If you do not see this bend in your rod, your planer is not set. You need to slow down and start the process over. So you'll be up and trolling and that is where the journey begins. Okay and here's the moment we've been waiting for. We're going to head out on a boat and I'm going to show you how to get into the bite with the Wahoo Planer Troll. All right, folks, we've headed out of Boca this morning, we've headed just to the north, just to the south of Delray. We're gonna do a little bit of planer trolling for Wahoo today. It's that time of year, February, March, the Wahoo are strolling through in between the cold fronts and stuff. If you get a chance to get out and the conditions are right, that's when you gotta go for them. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna stay between two and 300 feet, making smooth, S-shaped curves in and out of the reef's edge. We're gonna be trolling about six to eight knots with the planer. Okay, so we're up and rolling. We got our planer set on the Penn International 30. Number six planer with pink iridescent sea witch and a pink trolling squid. We're heading towards 300 feet right now, doing in between six and seven knots, which is optimal speed for planer trolling. When you're trolling, you gotta remember what you're doing. You are targeting fish that are actively hunting. 
You want to make them chase your line down. You don't want to troll so slow that you give fish time to come up and examine the bait and decide whether or not they think it's sketchy. You're enticing that impulse to feed. All right, so we're right at about 300 feet. We're gonna stay in this general vicinity. See if we can get into the fight. There we go, one on. There we go, good fish. Okay, and so there you have it. That was a beast of a Wahoo too. Can't ask for greater days when you go out targeting Wahoo and you get into the bite with that targeted, prized, elusive fish. Now don't get me wrong, learning this fishery takes practice. It's nothing that's a freebie. Is it gonna work every single time? Most definitely not. But if you give this tactic a try, it will work. It will get you into that bite. You will learn the fishery. You will learn the little nuances of what you need to do and where to find these fish. All right, folks, and before we close out this episode, what I wanna do is I wanna take you and I'm going to show you how to rig up an exact replica of this lure. My favorite go-to strip bait lure for catching waku. Okay, to do this properly, you're gonna need a few things. Two, 5.0 J-hooks, a four and a half inch squirt squid, a sea witch of any color, quarter ounce sea witch, haywire twist tool if you like to use it, and about 18 to 24 inches of number four 40 pound test wire leader. This wire leader is from the company Malin. 
I like this size leader because it's a little bit more stealthy. And a cutting tool. The first thing we're gonna need to do is make a double hook tandem setup with the two hooks. To do this, what you're gonna do is where the shank loops and forms an eye and meets back with the shank, you will put your cutting tool right in between there and squeeze it and that will open up your eye. Just a little bit enough to get the other barb of the hook through there. Twist it backwards, pull it in, and there you have it. Now you will hold your trailing hook and you're gonna use the back end of your cutting tool to squeeze the eye closed. Make sure it's closed, make sure your hook won't back out and you have a double hook tandem setup. So the first thing we'll do is we're gonna take our hooks and we're gonna thread them onto the wire leader. Then we'll take the tag end of the wire leader and we'll pass it through the solid state of the haywire twist tool. Then we are going to form a loop at the end and we'll leave our hooks down in that loop. Then we will pinch down and form a loop towards the end of our hooks and we will start twisting. We're gonna give about eight to 10 twists to form a good knot in the wire. And then we will release the hair wire twist tool. And there we go, we've got our loop and we've got our twists. Now we are going to do barrel wraps. To do this, you form a 90 degree angle with your tag end and you will take the loop and you will start winding. All right, and there we have some nice packed barrel wraps. Now we're gonna break off the tag end just simply by bending it back and forth. That will give us a nice smooth break on it where we won't get snagged. The next step in the assembly process is to put the trolling squid on. So we'll pass our wire through the sinker, through the nose, and we'll thread it all the way down to the hooks. Then we're going to put our sea witch on. We will pass the wire down through the weight of the sea witch, feed it all the way through, and there we go. That is going to be our end lure. To finalize the lure, we will make another haywire twist and the end so that we can hook it onto our leader. So again, we'll take what's gonna be our tag end, pass it through the solid state of the haywire twist tool, leave about an inch hanging out. We're gonna form a loop and again, give it about eight to 10 twists. And again, we're gonna do barrel wraps by taking and twisting our loop. There we go, some nice barrel wraps. And again, simply bend your tag back and forth until it snaps off and you're good to go. There's your second haywire twist. This is the part that will hook onto your leader. Okay, so that's how you rig up that specific lure that I made, the pink, white, and yellow trolling squid with the pink iridescent sea witch and about 16, 18 inches of number four 40 pound wire leader. Don't worry, it's not too light. I caught that giant wahoo on that exact lure, how you saw me make it. And in closing, remember, you're gonna hit that deep ledge of the reef. Don't stand shallow looking for these fish. You're gonna cruise around doing at least six to eight knots. Remember, you're trolling. The definition of trolling is the pursuit of fish that are actively hunting. You are making fish chase you down so that you can get into that bite. All right, folks, that about does it for this episode. I hope you had fun, I hope you enjoyed, and I hope you learned about what I consider to be the easiest way to target and catch Wahoo. Till next time, South Florida saltwater fishing, going wherever the cool wind takes us.